Did you know that there's a key on your keyboard that can actually do a little bit of magic inside of Lightroom? It can reveal some hidden functions and even make your workflow a lot faster, easier, and more precise. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The first place I want to show you where you can use this key is the Curves tool. So as you might know, Lightroom's Curves tool is super powerful to adjust the tonal range of your photos, and it's really great to create your own custom style of edits. However, it can be a little bit fiddly to make fine adjustments. You might want to move a point on the curve just a tiny bit, but it's too clumsy to get it precisely where you want it. However, if you hold the Alt Option key while making tone curve adjustments, it will actually slow down the mouse drag speed. And this allows you to make finer adjustments and makes using the curves tool a lot easier. And this next one is also going to make your life a lot easier because you know how sometimes you start editing an image and you, for example, go over all the basic adjustments and then you realize that you're not really happy with how it currently looks and you'd rather start over. Well, instead of clicking each slider to reset it, you can actually hold the Alt Option key to reveal the option to reset all the sliders. And when you click on the reset command, it will just return all the sliders to zero. So it's very useful for resetting multiple sliders with just one click. And as you can see, this shortcut works in all the right hand panels. And the alter option key also has a reset function in the masking filters. Just select a filter and then hold alt or option to change the word effect to reset. And then simply click reset to return all the sliders to zero. And since we're at the topic of masking filters, let me show you a few more functions that this alt option key has for these filters. A few updates ago, Lightroom added this amount slider here, which allows you to trim back the intensity or increase the intensity of the filter. However, when you hold the Alt Option key and then select the center dot of your filter, you can simply click and drag to the right to intensify the settings or click and drag to the left to lessen them. And this works for every masking filter. So for example, the linear gradient filter, you just select the center square. And if you, for example, have a select subject filter, you can just select the little person icon here, click and drag it, and it will also change the intensity of that filter. And by now you can probably tell that what is actually happening is we are adjusting this amount slider here, but with a nice little shortcut. Another cool little function with the Alt Option key for masking filters can be used with the linear gradient filter. So in this Northern Lights image here, I have a linear gradient going from the top towards the bottom. But let's say I want to invert this filter. Well, an easy way to do that is by holding Alt or Option and clicking and holding one of the outer lines of the linear gradient filter. Now, when I drag towards the center and cross the center line, the filter will invert. But as you can tell, it also adjusts the feather of the filter without moving the center line. And this can be very handy to make precise adjustments to your linear gradient filters. Another handy use of the Alt Option key is when you're using the brush mask. So let's add a new brush mask. And you can tell right now that there is a plus sign in the center of my brush. And if I paint with the brush, it will add my desired settings to that area. If I now press and hold the Alt Option key while still using the brush mask, Lightroom will switch to the Erase brush. So you can see that now a minus sign appears in the center of the brush, and now I can simply erase certain areas of my brush mask. And this is just a super useful shortcut that allows you to quickly switch between the brush and the eraser. And the Alt Option key has a similar function when you're using the Spot Removal tool. So when you have the Spot Removal tool activated, you will see a brush cursor. However, when you press and hold Alt or Option, it changes the cursor from a rounded brush to a scissor icon. And this allows you to delete any unnecessary spots simply by clicking on them with the scissors. So it's definitely another great time saver. A lot of times when you're editing, you might want to crop your image a little bit just to, for example, improve your composition or maybe have your subject fill the frame a little bit more. So when you open the crop tool, either by clicking the icon here or by pressing the shortcut R, the crop overlay will appear over your image. When I now grab a point on the overlay, the crop overlay remains anchored to the opposite side of that point. So if I, for example, grab it on the top right here, you can see that it's anchored to the bottom left here. Or if I grab it in the top middle here, it's anchored on the bottom middle there. However, maybe I want to crop right in the center. Like in this photo, for example, where my subject is in the center and I just want to fill the frame a bit more. So I'm actually using the crop more as kind of a digital zoom. If I hold the Alt Option key and then grab a point on the crop overlay, Lightroom will keep the crop centered. This makes it really easy to keep my frame as I shot it, but digitally zoom in. And when you're holding the Alt Option key, it doesn't really matter which point on the crop overlay you're grabbing because it will just always do a center crop. Another great 
great thing the Alt Option key can do is help you see which parts of your photo are being affected by the changes you make. What I mean by that is Lightroom will show you an overlay to better visualize the adjustments that you're making. For example, when you're adjusting your tone settings, it's really handy to see whether or not you're over or underexposing any parts of your image. And this over or underexposing is often referred to as clipping. When you hold the Alt or Option key and drag any of the tone sliders, except for the contrast slider, you will see areas where whites or blacks might be getting clipped as a result of your adjustment. So for example, when you adjust the shadows or blacks and hold the Alt or Option key, the white areas are not being clipped. And as soon as a color or black appears, Lightroom is showing you that that area is being clipped or in this case, underexposed. And when you're adjusting exposure, highlights, or whites, the black areas are not being clipped. And as soon as a color or white appears, Lightroom is showing you that that area is being clipped or overexposed. Another very handy overlay that's revealed by the Alt or Option key, and one that I use all the time, is when making adjustments in the Detail tool. Typically, when you open the Detail tool, the sharpening settings will look something like this. The amount at 40, radius at 1, detail at 25, and masking at 0. And the most important setting here is the masking, because that will determine what parts of your image are actually being sharpened. So when it sits at zero like this, Lightroom will actually sharpen your entire image. And generally, you don't want that, because it will literally sharpen everything. Anything including grain or noise in your image, or even any banding that you might have in gradients of color. So in order to make it easier for you to see where the sharpening is applied, you can preview the result of sharpening by holding the Alt Option key and dragging the masking slider. When you do that, Lightroom shows a black and white overlay over the image. And the areas which are black are not being sharpened and the ones which are white will be sharpened. And I usually drag it until the edges of my subject or the more prominent subjects in the image are white. So in this case, the outlines of the car. And I find that it's usually around 60 or 70, but it will of course depend on each image. And this results in a very precise sharpening, only to the areas of the image where it actually makes sense to add sharpening. You can also hold Alt Option when dragging the amount slider. And this shows you the sharpening applied to a black and white version of the image. And let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. But the black and white version allows you to get a better view of the sharpening result because Lightroom only sharpens the luminance and not the color. And holding Alt or Option when moving the radius slider shows you the thickness of the edge where the sharpening is being applied. So as you can see, when I move the slider up, the edges get thicker. And holding Alt or Option while moving the detail slider gives you a better view of how much detail is being sharpened in your image. So as you can see, if I move the slider up, more or smaller details are being revealed and those will be sharpened. Now generally you don't want to push this slider too far because that might result in extra noise. And speaking of noise, a very important function in the detail tool is of course noise reduction. And also here Lightroom has a function built in to help you visualize your adjustments. When you hold Alt or Option and then drag the luminance, detail or contrast slider, Lightroom again converts the image to black and white so that you can see the effect of your adjustments more clearly. Also in the post crop vignetting tool, you can use the Alt or Option key to help you visualize your adjustments. So when you hold the Alt Option key while you move either the midpoint, the roundness, the feather, or the highlight slider, Lightroom will show you the effect of these adjustments as it would look with the amount slider set to its maximum. And this is really helpful when you're adding just a slight vignette and it's hard to see what the other settings are actually doing. So now you finally have access to some of Lightroom's hidden functions by using the magical Alt or Option key. But there are even more super handy and powerful features inside of Lightroom that are honestly quite hidden away. So if you want to get the most out of your editing, make sure you watch this video here where I show you five top secret Lightroom tricks.